Hi, welcome to lesson six in Bootstrap Algebra. So we're going to courses, algebra, latest version. Uh, so we're going to talk about defining values today, something super useful uh, that you probably noticed from last time, some annoying things, um, and uh, this is going to fix some of that stuff. But let's look at what we did last time. Last time we talked about function composition, so we're going to take take a function and have the output of one function be the input to the next function. Um, that turned out to be super useful. It let us go um, in the in the function cards and, and uh, with numbers from one state to another state, and then we extended that into images where we could take one uh, type of image and then apply um, many different function transformation to it by composing those functions and um, turn it into a completely separate state, whether it was make it bigger or rotate or whatever, and you got some, some practice um, doing that, um, both in uh, the practice page and in this other little exercise that hopefully you had the time to do, a uh, chance to do, of um, just applying three different functions. One thing you probably noticed well, before I talked about that, let's well, let's go to the let's get on the right uh, lesson. So defining values. Go down the materials. Here's the lesson slide. One thing you probably noticed in in doing that that last set of exercises was you had to um, type or or uh, copy and paste the same definition over and over and that got to be kind of a pain so um, um, in this case uh, and there's a typo here in this slide which I'm actually just going to fix because we don't want it to be look wrong and uh, I had to fix these slides from a different programming language that uses commas instead of spaces so, and this is a great example of the, the thing that we're going to have today, which is um, without these definitions, you, we see. So this is this is something you might have noticed too. If you have to change something or fix something in one of your um, definitions, you end up having to fix it all over the place. So we really are only using this definition of a solid green star, star. And when I want to make changes to it, I now have to change it in five different places. And that surely is a problem that we can use our programming language to help with. Same thing here in Wii Scheme. The paren goes first, and then the first function name. So, our main uh, function definition here, star 50 solid green, we ended up having to fix it a bunch of different places. And you probably noticed that in your um, in some of your homework. So, what can we do to fix that? So the more code there is, the harder it can be to read. So uh, just like we saw saw here, um, this solid green 50, it keeps coming back. But the more we have to do to it, the harder it is to notice that. Um, it could be more difficult, depending on the computer programming environment, to do all of those definitions again and again and again. And maintainability is what I was just showing, which is if we need to change it one place, we got to change it every place. We can make mistakes. Um, uh, another thing uh, that I don't think we do talk about here is, man, it sure would be nice if I could give this a name so that I don't have to look at that long definition. So that will be some kind of documentation where um, I could name it. If the solid green star um, is a decoration, I could call it decoration. If it's the prize, I could call it the prize. So whatever it, it whatever it's standing for, I could actually give it a name, and that's actually going to help me and the, the uh, any programmers who come later. So. Um, since we're going to use that star over again, we'll give it a nickname. Uh, 
and we're going to use the define keyword to do that. Um, so in math, we have definitions, right? Like x equals 4 or y equals x plus 1. You've definitely seen that kind of stuff in your algebra or pre-algebra. We can do the same thing in we scheme. We use that define keyword and we say x. So wherever I see x in the future in the program, then the, the, per, the, the language is going to put in the number 4. And then the same thing, I can even build on those definitions and say that y equals x plus 1. So when when the, 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 the programming uh, environment sees this x, it's going to go back up here and say, well, I don't know what an x is. And it goes up here and says, well, x is a 4. Oh, I know what a 4 is, and it's going to substitute that in. And then uh, what's y going to be? It's going to be 5, right? So the value of y is going to be 5. That's the way we talk about it. We'll say um, this is the nickname or the variable, and the val it may have a value at a certain time depending on what's come before it. So we can use define to create definitions for commonly used expressions. So in this uh, example, um, we, we looked at x and y, but also we could use something like prize. So in our game, um, the prize may be a star that's solid 50. So instead of just having to rely on you know, this function name, I can actually give it a meaningful name that I can use throughout the rest of the program. So, so one thing we want to point out, the difference between um, algebra and a programming language is expressions evaluate to answers and give you a result. Definitions don't. So this definition of prize we're saying is equivalent to that. So this expression, we know from the contract that the expression star 50 is going to give me an image data type as a result. But this whole definition does not give a result. So it doesn't just the, the act of typing this in doesn't give me an image. And in fact, we can even look at that. Let's copy this. And let's go into Whiskey. Paste that in. See how that didn't print out the star? Because there is no result. There's no the of prize. Price the, the define the define keyword changed my programming environment, but it didn't actually give me uh, an image out. If I type in prize now, that gives me a, an image out. But so there's a difference between defining prize and an expression that uses prize. So we learned uh, we could scale. Right? So that is an expression that uses prize, and it does have a result, but the actual definition does not. So it's just something I want to, we'll, we'll keep coming back to the, that difference between um, an expression and uh, a definition. All right, this is going to be your homework. We won't stop, but we'll, we'll, we'll briefly look at these. Um, page 22, defining values. So just um, a few things to do on that worksheet. Same thing on 23, a few more circles of evaluation. We're almost done with circles of evaluation. So just a couple of, of sheets there, and then we're going to have a really fun uh, additional homework after that. First, let's look at this um, of, of why it's important, why we might want to use um, why well, it's going to be important to, to use this um, even in math. So uh, we see a structure that's repeated. If we look at this um, algebra expression, you notice we have x plus 1, and we have x plus 1, we have x plus 1. 
right? So we have um, this structure repeated, and that's something that we could um, use a definition to clean up. And then we don't have to even think about what um, uh, is inside there, so we can take a, a complex problem and use definitions to make it more simple to help us think about it. So let's look at this Chinese flag example. So I'm going to click on, um, actually, I'm not going to click on that because I want to right click. Uh, you can click on it if you use your um, same browser for Wii Scheme. I use a different browser, so I'm going to just paste that in. And this is the first time we've seen, we've used the definitions area. I'm going to move this bar way over to the right. And um, we see some code here and so we can I'm going to move this now back over to the left so we can see what it's going to do and I can type run and it made uh, an image of the Chinese flag so some of these we haven't um, uh, there's a function we, we've used uh, we haven't seen before put image that lets us into the same space put multiple images so instead of being you know, big star, little star, little star, little star um, down the page. This lets us stack images on top of each other so we can make a flag. All right, now let's look at something that's repeated here, and you can see it. You can, can see it here. We have stars that are repeated. Well, we can see that in the code. Look here. Here's star 15, solid yellow. Look, every time we see... Uh, one of the small stars, we have star 15 solid yellow. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to have to scale one of them, aren't we? Yep. Yep. There's one that's three times bigger. So we could make a definition. Define. And we could call it small star, we could call it star. And then we can just take out, uh, let's see, we don't want to name it the same as the function. It might let us do that, but um, it's not a good idea to. A lot of times, if you can't think of a name, you could say my star. But let's put, we'll put small star, since this is the small star. All right, and what is a small star? And we're just going to copy and paste that. And like we said, that definition actually doesn't do anything by itself, and we haven't used it yet. So to see if I made any mistakes, I'm just going to run this again. All right, and it ran really fast. It wrote that again. That's one thing you'll notice about using the run. Instead of going down the page, it, um, it replaces. So it's, it gives us something fresh. So we didn't make any mistakes. We didn't help anything yet. But now that we have this definition for small star, every time we see star 15 solid yellow, we can replace it. So let's do it once here. And we can do it once here. And again. And again. And again. Again, and that's not that's not that, that so now I've got more room on the page so I'm gonna take out some of these returns just so I can see if I can see because now I don't have as much uh, text so I can kind of make sense of what's going on a little easier. And it looks like put image. We're just going to keep putting more images on top of this. Um, and you'll have to understand all of that. We just want to see if our star, uh, small star, worked. So I'm going to hit 
run again, and it worked. Um, you see it blink. And in fact, now we could do something. This won't be the Chinese flag, but we could just briefly run that. See what that did? Let's change it back to yellow. So we only had to make that change one place, and it um, it changed all of our stars for us. So we have our small stars that aren't scaled, and then we'll have one star somewhere. Yep, here's one that is scaled by three. So this one's three times bigger. All right, so that hopefully you can see the advantage of being able to uh, make a definition and then use that definition later in the program. So in addition to um, these two worksheets, um, open and well, the flags of the world. So this is your other um, homework. So flags of the world tells you um, the basic shapes um, and uh, also suggests some other things you can use overlay beside and above and we can look out and see what those do so let's say overlay all right expects at least two arguments all right Let's just do like we normally do and put in sets of quotes and it'll it'll correct us. Expects an image as the first argument. Well, let's see. I want to define red box as rectangle. Red uh, 20. Uh, expects four arguments, but two given. Uh, I forgot how you do a rectangle, but let's do that. All right, and then in order to be able to see that better, go over here. Uh, we could always go to the documentation. <laughs> And then control F, rectangle. Oh, it's number, number, solid. All right, let's do that. Let's get back to there. Rectangle. Uh, let's do 16, 16, solid, red. Got to spell it right. Got to put that in quotes. All right, that's a small box. Let's do 64. That's good. Now let's define it. Define a red box. Copy and paste this. Enter, which we don't expect anything out. Now let's just type in red box. Good. All right, now let's look back at our documentation for overlay overlay takes two images overlay uh, takes up multiple images and puts them on top of each other so um, we'll use one that they use which is this rectangle and it looks like we can have as many as we want so I'm going to say overlay my red box with this rectangle. 
uh, let's see, it might be covering it up. Let's make this really big. All right. Yep. See it? And that's going to be the order, too. So probably if we had done this one in a different order, let's overlay that rectangle with a red box. Right? So it does matter. The order matters. Right? When we first did this and we had. Um, the red box on top of the rectangle, we couldn't see it. Now that we have the rectangle on top of the red box, we can see it. So um, the flags of the world it also talks about beside and above. You can read the documentation for those. And then um, these give you some uh, examples you can do. And let's read. So we'll do our uh, review and get the assignment at the bottom. So we talked about all of these. We did talk about, remember, variable is what the name we're going to use um, in our define. So like red box, I just used the variable red box. And it had a value of that image, right? So red box has the value that is that image. So we learned about um, using the define keyword and hopefully you see um, how useful that is in looking at the structure and cleaning up the code. Um, so the, the, the assignment is just to create one or more of those flags. So this is a bunch of different um, examples that you can use, just ideas um, made of uh, different shapes that you can use uh, in definitions and overlay beside above and uh, to be able to create some of these flags of the world. So pick one, two, or three. Isn't that interesting with these different triangles on top of each other? Um, and see if you can replicate um, these flags. So uh, that plus the two worksheets are your homework for this lesson.